Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. And today we're going to be taking a look at a very special release of Armenian brandy coming to us from the Ararat uh, Distillery. Well, actually, the distillery's name is the Yerevan Brandy Company, but the line that they produce is the Ararat line, okay? You'll see a lot of different bottlings of theirs. They have multiple, you know, ranges of vintages, ages, and stuff. But this is the Charles Aznavour Signature Blend. Comes in this nice box. Actually opens pretty cool. Let's see if I can get it to do that. There we go. So the bottle just sits right in there when you get it. Um, again, great presentation like that. It's all cardboard. There's nothing super fancy about it. Uh, price point wise, it was $200. It is 80 proof. All right, so not super big on the proof. But there is plenty of old brandy in it. Okay, now before we get to the nosing and tasting, let me tell you about Charles Aznavour real quick because, you know, to be honest, I didn't know a whole ton about him before I started researching him for this. I put everything I kind of found in the description, so if you want to see, you know, a little more detail, you can go down there. Uh, but the guy had an amazing life. Uh, he was a, perf well, let's start in the beginning. He was <laughs> born in France to Armenian immigrant parents who were, of course, escaping the wars and genocides and stuff they were having over there. They left to France. He was born. He was raised in a family of basically musical performers. His dad was a singer in restaurants. Um, he ended up dropping out of school at nine years old to perform. And he was doing plays early on because he was also an actor. Um, and then I guess in his late teens, early 20s, during the German occupation of France, his family uh, was helping hide a lot of people that were hiding from Nazis. So they did that. He and his sister um, kind of did a lot of that little covert stuff, trying to help people escape that. So they were actually given a really high honor from Israel. I think one was one of the highest honors you can get from Israel. They were given that award. Then, I guess uh, after his late 20s, he was started singing, and he started that career. He was a crooner, so think, and people call him the French Frank Sinatra. And so he has a lot of famous songs that uh, kind of have that styling. Uh, then later on in his life, he became an activist, uh, both political and he did a lot of charitable work, uh, not just for France, but specifically a lot for Ar Armenia. And the reason was, was because in, I think it started, I think around 1988 for him, there was that big earthquake. He got together with like 18 other artists and they did a, a song where, you know, very, all the ch charity went to Armenia. Um, and... Beyond all that, I mean, he lived a very long life. He lived to be uh, 94 years old when he passed away on October 1st, 2018. I think he was born 1924, if that math adds up. Uh, but, you know, very long life. The sad thing, as far as this release was, was that the master blender at this distillery, which is the Yerevan Brandy Company, actually invited him out in 2017 when he was visiting Armenia. He came by they tasted through blends. They talked about probably doing the signature blend together. And, of course, as blends go, they take time. Sometimes they're, you know, scheduling. So it did not get completed until after his passing in 2019. But that's what we have right here. Uh, each vintage that the Cellar Master, uh, you know, included in here is, again, listed right in the back here. It talks about, you know, 1956, 1960, 1981. And the reason was, was because each one of those years kind of hit like a little milestone marker in his life. Again, I can't remember the exact moments for each of those, but they're in the description. Um, but if you do the math, you know, because the first thing I thought of, 1981, we're in 2020, that's 40 years. You know, why is this a 25-year-old if that's the youngest? Of course, then I started thinking about it and I figured it out pretty fast. Brandies don't sit in casks forever. You know, if it was distilled um, in 81, by the time it hit 2006, it was probably, you know, maybe starting to peak, starting to hit a really nice profile. And when a, a brandy does that, whether it be cognac or armagnac, a lot of times they'll pull it out of the oak. They don't want it to keep continuing to mature and pull a lot of tannin, so they'll pull it out put it into a glass demijohn, label the demijohn, and then they know that's the vintage, that's how old it was when it went into the glass. So technically, even though it's sitting in there for another, 
you know, 15, 20, 40, 80 years, whatever the case may be, that's not, of course, adding on to the maturation level of that brandy because it's no longer in wood, okay? So that's how come they have 81 distillate, 1960 distillate going back to 1956, okay? So youngest is 25. We don't know the oldest just because even though it's 56 and 60, again, we don't know when it was put into damage on. Okay. Whew. All right, we got through all that. Let's get to the nosing and tasting, right? $200.00. 80 proof the one thing I will say about this one is the Roncio note on it spectacular on the nose so when you're thinking like um, you know kind of like that French cheese uh, or maybe a little hint of blue cheese in there kind of a mushroomy damp cellar type tone yeah cedar along whoa Really nice jammy note right there. Of course, this is grape distillate, but it got jammy, like almost like a strawberry and grape jam together. A little clove, a little anise, black licorice in there. Hint of like a little raspberry as well. So it's like a combination, but the thing is, it's not like fresh berries. These are like preserves, jams, you know. Going, I'm taking the really soft inhalation here. That's where you get that real nice roncio coming through. And it is like kind of damp cellar mushroom, damp soil, and a little hint of that little funky cheese in there. Cedar, a unique cedar tone as well. Dates, figs, lots of stone fruits. A little hint of dried apricot. Chocolate. Lots of chocolate in there as well. Wow, great nose. Now the one thing I will say is that I am nosing some sweetness as well. So there's really nice uh, caramel sweetness to it. It does feel a tad dosed. You know, sometimes in brandies, um, even in cognac armagnac world, they are allowed to use a little dosage. So dosage is going to be a little, a little sweetener that they'll sometimes add just to kind of, um, I guess, give it a little silkier mouthfeel. And this one smells just a touch sweeter than natural. Okay, well, let's taste it. Tons of orange oils. All those nosing characteristics, definitely in on the palate. Oof, yeah. And I do, even though this does contain, I do believe this does contain some dosage, a little bit of that sweetener. But I will say that it mostly rides up front, heading to the mid palate. At the mid palate, it actually kind of feels like it, it drops the sweetness off because you're starting to get into that kind of walnut, bitter chocolate characteristic. So it's actually, and you get oak tannins as well, it's actually kind of drying out that sweetness on the finish. I really like that. Ooh, let's see if we can get all these notes. Here we go. Yeah, caramel, brown sugar, whoa, right up there. Uh, Roncio hits early. I was about to start going into the spices, but Wow, the Roncio hits up. I was starting to get into the fruits, actually. Roncio runs up, gives you that kind of mushroom, damp cellar uh, characteristic. Then you start picking up all those figs, dates, a lot of, lot of fresh dates. Um, orange oil. Again, that's a characteristic to me of an old, I find it a lot in old bourbons. Um, sometimes in old spirits, I'll get this old orange oil characteristic and that is in here the ron seals runs it almost like once that hits it drops to the bottom and it just takes off running so you're like 
even though you're kind of getting other flavors dropping in, the spice kind of ramps up on the mid palate. You start getting that, again, those uh, roasted nuts and then heading into the oak tannins. That Roncio characteristic is just running along the bottom. Very chocolatey now on that back end. Not milk. This is more like uh, maybe 60%. Yeah, right about there. Great mouthfeel. Medium. Feels a little bit medium just because of that, again, dosage. But as it enters, again, you know, all those dates, figs, all that orange oil. Oof, just tons of those dried fruits. Little hint of like a, a little raisin, but I almost think I kind of, again, those medjool dates is kind of what this is more heavy on. Mushrooms, a little hint of, actually the cheese component in here on the Roncio isn't as big on the palate as it was on the nose. This one on the palate, it's more um, soil, mushroom driven. But as you hit that mid palate and it kind of hits that full body, yeah, it's just very enveloping. And then you get again that kind of toffee, chocolate, you get walnuts, and that's the, what's drying it out. And the oak, little hint of cedar underneath there. A pretty decent finish. Um, I think if they had backed that, that little sweetness off just a touch more, maybe giving it a bump if they could, I don't know, because again, sometimes vintages, you know, they'll let them ride. Uh, another thing about barrels is they'll let them ride because they're losing alcohol over there because again the cellars are damp uh, They're cool. So they're actually uh, losing alcohol not water in the in the cask So I'm sure by the time these start hitting 1981 1960 1956 They're probably right at 40% ABV 80 proof They don't want them to drop below because if they drop below they can't bottle them So they have to start throwing them in blends. They don't want to do that um because they have to go in higher, younger, just to try to bump up their proof. So that's probably when they're hitting Demi John as well. And I think this one, I would have loved to have seen it a little bump in proof. 43, 46 would have been awesome. Uh, but we didn't get that, okay? We didn't. But 40%, 25-year-old Armenian brandy, Charles Aznavour Signature Blend. If you see it out there on shelves, don't be afraid of picking it up. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Um, wow. Yeah, I guess that's about all I have to say about it. Anyway, uh, of course, as always, this is going to launch two weeks before YouTube on my Patreon channel, patreon.com slash liquorhound. I hope you can join us over there, but if not, uh, catch us here on YouTube. Keep leaving all those great comments. I'll get back to them just as soon as I can. Everyone have a great day, and cheers.